Will you pray with me? Gracious God, I know that these are not perfect words. I know that they may not even be the right words, but they are what you have placed on my heart today. And I pray that your presence and your spirit, your power and your love will transform them into whatever it is that we need to hear today to believe that you are still speaking in our midst. Amen. The New York Times recently had this beautiful profile describing Quaker worship meetings that are taking place over Zoom right now. Quaker worship services, as many of you probably know, are based in silence. There's no sermon or homily that's given. The entire group listens together in silence for the movement of God. And then those who feel led to speak and to share do so. But mostly it's silence and it's listening. And this story describes people who are finding the power in that form of worship together still today, even through Zoom, which might seem kind of a strange vehicle for silence. One older man who's been apart from his partner from, of many years since this quarantine time has begun describes how they still attend their worship services together each week. He from the Bronx and she from Savannah, Georgia. And he scrolls through the images each week on Zoom to find her picture and then pulls it over next to his on the screen. I like it best when she is to my left, he writes, just like she would be in the pew. Another woman wrote, I share with my neighbors that I'm attending Quaker meetings via Zoom and they laughed, sitting in silence in front of a computer for an hour. Some things you just can't explain. Making intentional time to listen is something that we don't seem to practice a lot these days. We all have opinions galore and more than enough platforms by which to share them. But listening doesn't seem quite as prevalent. You know, I'm convinced, really, that the most miraculous part of this Pentecost story is not that the apostles could suddenly speak in languages that were not their own, but that people listened. That a diverse group of people with different languages and cultures gathered in Jerusalem that day were all able to hear and most importantly to understand the same message of God's deeds and power, each in their own tongue. It wasn't that there was one universal language that broke out in that moment, but in different languages, that message was proclaimed and heard and understood. And I think that that's important because the story doesn't seem to be calling us to all be or speak the same. It is not a story about uniformity. Pentecost is a glorious celebration, the vibrancy and the diversity and the power of the spirit and the ability to recognize God's voice in all its different forms. But it also calls us to a shared understanding, a common vision of what God is doing and ask us to be in the world. And that strikes me particularly as a moment that needs divine intervention. Because these days, even in a situation where people are all speaking the same language, I am not sure that we are all hearing the same message anymore. What Peter shared in his Pentecost sermon that day in Jerusalem was a message of God's spirit being poured out on all flesh. It's a description of visions and dreams and prophetic witness being shared by those who were normally dismissed or silenced. It's about strange and even terrifying events that disrupt the way that things have always been because they didn't need to stay that way. It's about Jesus Christ who was crucified and raised to new life and calling us to be witnesses to that resurrection power in our own lives. That's how I understand that the spirit is speaking in Pentecost. So why is it that we have such disparity in what we are hearing the spirit say today? When did it become so hard to hear and to understand each other? When the loss of an innocent life is seen as anything but a horrific tragedy, we are clearly not hearing the same spirit 
when inappropriate behavior by a person of authority causes us to search for reasons to rationalize it or to focus more on proving that it isn't universal rather than acknowledging the wrong and trying to do better, we are not hearing the same spirit. When we insist on having automatic weapons to protect ourselves but refuse to wear a mask to protect anyone else, we are not hearing the same spirit. When religious leaders encourage people to gather for in-person worship, even when it is not safe or wise to do so, especially for the most vulnerable, we are not hearing the same spirit. When the ancestors of people who were brought to this country in chains are told over and over again that there is no such thing as racism or white supremacy, and yet they still can't kneel or march or speak up or wear their hair in a certain way or birdwatch in the park or jog in their own neighborhood without fear or retribution, we are not hearing the same spirit. When we criticize the phrase Black Lives Matter because we fear that it might exclude us, but can't see how it acknowledges and names those who are already excluded, we are not hearing the same spirit. We are not hearing the same spirit. So either the message of the spirit has changed or we just aren't listening anymore. Because the spirit that I read in this Pentecost story is one that is transforming the world as we know it, not trying to justify it. And to hear the spirit, we first have to listen, not just to what we already think or believe, not just to our own voice or to people who think and speak just like us, but to what God is saying and doing among us, to each other. The good news of Pentecost though, is that God speaks in ways that we can understand. God desperately wants us to understand and to understand each other. But that means having the humility to believe that our own life experience is not the full measure of what it means to be alive in the world today. That we just don't know what it means to walk around in someone else's skin. To have the imagination and the courage to listen to how other people, especially people who don't look and sound like us, might experience the pain of the world and the power and the promise of the spirit in their lives. Now, we are not going to get everything right as we try to do, even as we try to do that. And I am very aware that our current culture makes it really difficult for people to show vulnerability or to make mistakes. It feels daunting. It feels potentially humiliating to try and acknowledge something about ourselves or about the world that needs changing. But after Peter's impassioned sermon that day, describing the power of God's spirit, the crowds pleaded with him, what can we do? What should we do? And the first word out of Peter's mouth was repent. Repent. Our response to the Spirit's work begins with a recognition first and foremost that we need God's help to live it out. That's why it is so important that we listen and not just speak because we don't always get it right, even with good intentions. In the midst of this extremely painful and volatile time in our country, I desperately want to be a vessel for healing and compassion and for justice. But I can't even begin to do that unless I'm willing to acknowledge the places where conscious or not, intended or not, I have been part of the problem to recognize that I have benefited from the color of my skin as a white woman in America, sometimes in ways that have been completely invisible to me. Many of the things that we take for granted about our society have been built on foundations that are sinful and broken and unjust. And so we have to listen. Even that though is not simple or easy. Even when we start with listening, I know that it can be hard to understand each other and where we're coming from. There is a genuine fear and confusion and even anger about the violence that has occurred as part of the protest and riots that have emerged in these last few days. Violence should not forget violence. I believe that God calls us to be peacemakers in the world. Jesus said just that in the Sermon on the Mount. 
But as Martin Luther King preached from a Montgomery, a Montgomery pulpit, peace is not merely the absence of tension, but the presence of justice. So while we can stand for peace and we should call for peace, let's not forget also to listen for what true peace actually sounds like. And especially what it sounds like to someone who is also fearful and confused and angry over the loss of another human life. Someone who feels unheard. Try and listen for what is behind the pain that is rising up so palpably right now. And to believe that the spirit of God is still speaking in languages that all of us can and should understand. Back in early March, Reverend Scott secured a block of tickets for a screening of the documentary 13th down at the Kennedy Center. And a small group of us from BUMC were able to attend. The title of the movie comes from the 13th Amendment, the one that officially ended involuntary servitude in the US except as punishment for those convicted of a crime. While slavery itself was legally banned by the 13th Amendment, the movie tells the story of how African-Americans have continued to be victimized and criminalized by the legacy of slavery and the systemic racism that has grown out of it. How racism didn't end with slavery, it just went underground. At one very emotional moment in the film that showed footage of Philando Castile, a woman in the audience suddenly let out this long and guttural wail. It was like the pain just rose up audibly from her body, unable to be contained. And every single person in the room in that huge theater heard it. And it echoed off the walls until it died away in the darkness. It was gut-wrenching and haunting. And out of all the moving on the powerful images from that night, it was the sound of that woman's cry that I will never forget. I hear it right now. That took place only on March 9th of this year, but in so many ways, it seems a lifetime ago. There was supposed to be a conversation with the director, Ava DuVernay, after the viewing that evening, but she wasn't able to travel from New York due to the early emerging concerns around the spread of the coronavirus here in the US. And so she live streamed in for the conversation and the rest of us sat in a packed auditorium, shoulder to shoulder watching that film, no mask, plenty of handshaking, a hundred more thousand people that were alive then that are not today. So many things have changed since that night, but too much hasn't. And so we find ourselves now in the midst of a pandemic that has only amplified much of the pain and the divisions between us. The writer Roxane Gay has an editorial that appears this morning in the paper where she writes, eventually doctors will find a coronavirus vaccine, but black people will continue to wait despite the futility of hope for a cure for racism. The rest of the world yearns to get back to normal for Black people, normal is the very thing from which we yearn to be free. On this Pentecost day, let us boldly proclaim that we do not want to return to the way things were. Let us listen. Listen for a more faithful, a more just, and a more loving way to be together. Let the power of God come among us again on earth and in wind and in fire, so that in all our many languages and words and lives, that we might hear and understand the power of the spirit among us. Amen.